O come, O come, Emmanuel, our God is with us and near, rejoice. Good morning. It is a joy to be with you on this, the third Sunday of Advent, uh, the candle which is joy. And we welcome all of you who have gathered for worship uh, virtually and with us here in the sanctuary today. Um, we are preparing for a different kind of Christmas, but Christmas nonetheless. Uh, a number of things uh, have continued. I want to celebrate with the congregation and all of you who have supported. Our angel tree was able to contribute. Um, for the Smithfield Rescue Mission, we were able to collect $600. Uh, Dot Elmore with Mission Outreach delivered that earlier this week. Um, during this time of year, and especially with the need being great for hospitals, we will have a blood drive right between New Year's Eve, and um, that'll be December 30th on a Tuesday. And also, I would like to, I'm sorry I'm going in and out this morning with this microphone. There we go. And uh, one uh, uh, remembrance today, um, our one of our members, John McFadden, died Tuesday. His life will be celebrated. Um, today, graveside at Sunset Memorial Park at 2 p.m. Um, I ask your prayers to be with John's family. Also, uh, this in this week, um, there have been many families who have been dealing with loss and grief. A uh, couple I would mention, uh, some may know and some you may not, but um, some years ago we had a family, um, the Bales family, who had worshipped with us regularly. Bart and his mother, um, Evelyn, uh, their, Bart lost his father this week. Uh, quietly, he was at home. Our prayers are with them. Uh, they are sometimes watching. So we want to remember them. Also, um, during this time and appropriate to um, our concerns for this season, um, we want to remember in prayer uh, the unexpected and sudden loss of Brant Lewis's mother, Betty, who died yesterday from COVID complications. Brant is the son-in-law of Jim Henderson, and our prayers are with them during this difficult time. So continue uh, to be safe, be well, and uh, keep all of these people in prayer uh, during this season. Um, we are having a Christmas Eve service. It will be outside. Uh, Stan and Kelly Coates have welcomed us to Hillcrest Farms 
in the open air arena. So who have disabilities or uh, special needs, you can drive the car up. Um, we encourage people to bring, uh, like we do for our fireworks display, a chair. Uh, if you'd like to sit outside, social distancing and masking place, but this will be at seven o'clock, our usual Christmas Eve time for a service of lessons, and we'll figure out how we're going to do that as we approach. As God's people, let us now be called into worship. Read responsibly. In this time of worship, we remember that God is with us. God is with us in joy and in sorrow. In Jesus Christ, God reshapes the past, the present, and our future. We wait with God for something new to emerge. In this time of worship, we await the birth of Jesus. We wait with hope, preparing to rejoice in Jesus' name. On this Sunday, the third Advent candle is lit as a sign of increasing light in the darkness. We celebrate this as the Sunday of joy. Let us pray. Loving God, you approach us with such kindness and tenderness. You look kindly on us, no matter what our state or condition. Your care for this world is greater than we could ever ask or imagine. You bring order from chaos. You turn weeping into laughter. You turn sorrow into joy and death into new life. You redeem all that appears lost, making all things new. And so we come to you in joy, resting from our work and responsibilities, trusting you to bring peace amid our anxiety and hope into these uncertain times. Receive our worship this day as we anticipate the difference your gifts will make to us through Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Together, let us make an affirmation of our faith using our prayer of confession. Generous and gracious God, we confess that the stillness of our love and the narrowness of our concern these days, we easily become preoccupied with statistics and case numbers, opportunities to say thanks, to offer encouragement, to remember each other in friendship slip by. Anxiety turns us inward and anger can make us lash out. Forgive us for neglecting the joy at the heart of the Advent season. Turn our hearts back to you and inspire us with your love made flesh in Jesus Christ. Amen. Together, let us confess silently before God. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. There is nothing we have done, nothing we could ever do that can separate us from the love of God shown to us in Christ. Know that you are forgiven, and with this joyful truth, have the courage to forgive one another. For in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
In our time with the children today, we invite our young Christians, young and old, to come forward. Not going to work. <laughs> I will try to project this morning. But on this third Sunday in Advent, we um, look to the passage in Psalm 126, which is our Old Testament reading. And it speaks of how God trusted, uh, people of God trusted God to restore all that had been lost to them, sustain them in a difficult time. And the psalmist says, the Lord has done great things for them, has done great things for us, and we rejoiced, restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Water, rivers running in the desert. And for those who go out weeping, bearing the sowed for seed, that they shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. And I love that. In some churches, we, we, we traditionalists here in the Presbyterian Church, we like our four purple candles. I grew up with that. But if we were in the Episcopal or the Catholic or maybe the Methodist Church today, we would see the pink or rose candle lit ever seen that in a set of Advent candles. It doesn't matter. It's not scriptural basis. These are tools for teaching, as we're talking about today. But today's theme is joy. And one of those early songs, right after Jesus loves me, this I know, and Jesus loves all the little children of the world, was probably, and Miss Camille knows this, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Now I'm not going to sing that because you can tell where that's going to go. But it's keeping the joy down in our heart, keeping it there because God has given us the gift of grace. Now, we learned another verse, and I noticed that apparently, and Ms. Community, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't teach this verse anymore, but I learned it, and I learned it in Sunday school, is, and if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on a tack, sit on a tack. And we would sing that probably louder than any of the other verses, but it was a way of celebrating it. The joy that we had inside. Now, you know, we, we are living in an interesting time, and how do we show that joy to other people? Now, you know, when I go into a grocery store and I look at the labels and all those cans that line the shelves, I trust that the right picture got on the right can or bottle that tells me what's inside. It's just like our grape juice today for communion. We got a bottle of Welch's grape juice. You assume that when you open the little cup for those who are sitting here in the congregation that that's going to be real grape juice. That's what the label said it was going to be. But I'll tell you, there was one occasion, I was in a church, story for another day, that we drank it and it tasted like prune juice. But I'll hold that story for another day. But we assume this is going to be like grape juice. And because that's what they packed inside of it. Well, we as Christians who have joy down in our hearts, are we packaged accordingly? Now, if we weren't social distancing today, I would have had Davis come up here because he's wearing his shirt. But a few years ago, we did a mission here in Smithfield, and we all wore our first Presbyterian church, Smithfield shirts. We even had the symbol of the old stained glass window. For goodness me. And... We were proud. We rejoiced. We were filled with uh, happiness that we could go out in our community and serve our neighbors. The label was reflecting what we had hope, what we hope was packed inside of all of us, and that we could share that with others. These Advent candles, we began in hope the first Sunday and uh, peace the second Sunday, and joy. And so we see, are these the qualities, the gifts that are inside of us? Next Sunday will be the Sunday of love. And with the light that is increasing, we are packaged with the gifts of God to be filled with light and peace and hope and joy and love going out into the world. So if I'm wearing one of these t-shirts and I start whispering and gossiping and um, 
stirring the pot, as some say, or if I act in a way that doesn't reflect the gospel, my label reflects on all who carry the sign of the church. So I charge you, be filled with peace and hope and joy and love and the light of Christ. Let us pray. Gracious God, too often it's hard for others, especially in difficult times, to see that we are your children. It is only through not just the words, but how we act on the words you have given us to show joy and love and hope and peace and light to all we encounter that they may know that this is what the church truly is, who the body of Christ truly is for all the world. During challenging times, let your joy fill us deep down in our hearts. And we know if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. We ask your blessing. Dear Jesus, amen. Thank you. This morning, um, I'm going to continue with the New Testament passage um, that is very appropriate uh, for this third Sunday in Advent. And I'll share with you, I have never, um, the message that will follow today is one I have never shared in 30 years of ministry or beginning 31, but is very relevant to these words Paul writes to the Church of Thessalonians. I'll also add for all of you, this is one of the earliest scriptures that was written down for the New Testament, even older than the gospel stories themselves. Together, let us listen to the Spirit speaking to us. From 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, beginning at verse 12. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, Abstain from every form of evil. And may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all of them. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Ancient of days, Holy One of Israel, in every moment your word comes to us new and fresh. Speak your word to us, impart to us the wisdom of its words. Fill us with the gifts of the Spirit, with peace and hope and joy that in all circumstances we may rejoice in your presence, and that when things do become seemingly unbearable, we may rely on your grace to sustain us. Reduce now your servant, that the word should increase for us all. In Christ's name I pray, amen. 
during this season of 2020, which seems to be one long season some days, I shared something. Um, it's a cliche that probably we've all used. I confess I probably in years past have used it and wasn't really thinking at the time that I said it. But it's like God doesn't give you anything more than you can bear. Now that, be honest with you, is just not scriptural. And part of the passage, as I made a post on social media, I had borrowed it, is in fact, there are a lot of things that can break you, just break you smack down. Anybody who's dealt with depression or grief, and certainly in this season, mental health issues, first responders, nurses, doctors, firemen, just see the wave and wave of illness, and we have so many conflicted messages in our society, but one message is not conflicted, and that's the word we share today. God tells us to hold fast during good times and bad times. Rejoice always, Paul writes to Thessalonica, or Thessalonica. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Even in the most difficult of times, Christians, a people of faith, the Jews, understood that is where God's power can truly be seen. When we can no longer control the situation and we can feel completely powerless, that is where the power of God is truly shown. With the eyes of faith, and listening with the ears of faith, we may discern God very much at work in a time of trial in ways we could have never anticipated. And in the Lord's Prayer, the very prayer that Jesus taught to his disciples, that he says, deliver us from evil, deliver us in the more ecumenical contemporary version, deliver us from the time of trial. But we find ourselves perhaps, in a way that we never have before, finding our spirit tried, hurting. So the story, and it's not my own, but it's the story of Corey Tim Boom. And those who know Corey, and I hope by some chance Jane Allen's listening because we, we share a great love for her witness, um, tells the story where she and her sister, after trying to rescue Jews, had been arrested by the Nazis who had occupied Holland and had sent them to a concentration camp. And I share this story because it is the story of this early Christian text we hear today. Corey writes these words. Show us, show us how, Betsy said matter-of-factly, and it took Corey a moment to realize that her sister was praying. Corey, Betsy then exclaimed excitedly, he's given us the answer. Before we asked, as he always does, in the Bible this morning, what was it? Read that part again. And Corey checked to make sure no guards, none of the Germans were nearby. And she drew from her pouch a small Bible she had smuggled into the concentration camp. It was in 1 Thessalonians. She tried to find the passage in the feeble light. Here it is. Comfort the frightened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek good to do good to one another. And to all, rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. These are the very words you and I have heard today. That's it, Betsy interrupted. That's his answer. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's what we can do. We can start right now to thank God for every single thing about this barracks. And Corey stared at her sister incredulously, thinking in this dark, foul-smelling room, crowded. She said, such as? Such as being assigned here together, Betsy replied. Corey bit her lip. 
Oh yes, Lord Jesus, she had not been separated from her sister. Such as what you're holding in your hands. Corey looked down at the Bible and said, yes, thank you, Lord. There was no inspection when we entered here. And thank you for all the women here in this room who we will meet a future Thanksgiving, who we will meet in these pages. Yes, agreed Betsy. Thank you for the very crowding here since we're packed so close, many more will hear the story. And she looked at her sister expectantly and she prodded Corey. Oh, all right. And Corey, thank God there in that foul smelling dark place for being jammed in, crammed stuff packed in among the suffocating crowds. And Betsy continued and said, thank you for the fleas. And this was too much for Corey. She cut in on her sister, Betsy, there is no way that God can make me grateful for a single flea. Give thanks in all circumstances, Betsy corrected. It doesn't say in pleasant circumstances. Fleas are a part of this place that God has put us, and so they stood between the bunks of the barracks, and they gave thanks for the fleas. But Corey was sure her sister was wrong. The weeks passed. Betsy's health was weakened to the point that she didn't go to duty each day, but she was permitted to remain in the barracks and knit socks together with other seriously ill prisoners. They continued to gather and she continued to read the Bible during those times and she was able to do this undetected because for some reason the guards never came into the barracks. Betsy's eyes were twinkling when Corey returned from hard labor that day. And she saw that even in the midst of those horrible circumstances, her sister's eyes were glowing. You look extraordinarily pleased with yourself, Corey said to her. She said, you know, we've never understood why the guards never come in. Well, I found out. She said, I had to ask a guard, a supervisor to come in, and she wouldn't. She would not step through the door and Betsy said, it's because the fleas that we are not abused or suffer at the hands of the guards coming in. And Corey remembered this passage from Thessalonians. That's the story in its full telling. With God, you and I may find light in our darkness. And Paul blesses the church with his closing benediction in our passage today. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit, soul, and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful. He will do this. Beloved, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a holy kiss. I solemnly command you by the Lord that this letter be read to all of them. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Together, let us affirm our faith with all the church in every time and place. With the words of the Apostles' Creed, we say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
On this third Sunday in Advent, we share in the joy the disciples felt when they came to the table to be with Jesus, their teacher. As disciples, they were students of the lessons they imparted, but at this particular meal, Jesus said, You are no longer my disciples. You are my friends. We come to this table of the heavenly banquet of the kingdom of God as friends from north and south, from east and west. We rejoice with all the saints who have gone before us and who are to come. All are welcome at this table. For those who may be worshiping virtually today, we invite you to partake of what elements you may have available to you that we may share in the body and the blood of Christ, in the cup and the bread. Together, let us pray. Holy God, we come to you. We lift our voices with angels and archangels and all the faithful who forever proclaim Jesus as Lord. We give thanks that on the night of his arrest, Jesus joined with the disciples and transformed that relationship to their amazed and great joy that together we are friends, sisters and brothers in Christ. We give thanks that on this night that he took bread, and after giving thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body, broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant shed in my blood. The cup that proclaims with the bread the eternal covenant of grace and forgiveness until our Lord comes again to make all things new. This day we pray for the world, we pray for the church, we lift up to you our community of faith, especially to be with those who grieve. Remember the family of John McFadden and give thanks for his life among us as a member and servant of this church. We pray for all those who are sick, for all those who are caregivers at this time, who need your strength and healing. We trust ourselves to your gracious care that even when circumstances are overwhelming, that we can rely on your grace alone. That even in the darkest and most isolated of prisons, that you are there in our midst, giving us light hope, peace, and today especially joy. Remembering these things, we pray as your son taught us when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ that is broken for us, the blood of Christ, poured out for us in our salvation. Together, brothers and sisters, let us taste and know the goodness of the Lord. Together, let us pray. Holy Lord, out of your immense mercy, you have extended to us a new covenant in your body and blood that we should be filled with the Spirit made present among us and within us. Let our own lives be filled with the light of your presence that we may bear hope and peace and joy and love 
into all the world. For this grace we seek through Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Today we have shared in the good news, in the gospel of Jesus Christ proclaimed in word. We have gathered together and in thankful response we present our gifts to God. Here in our sanctuary today, if you would wish to present an offering to God, a plate is at the rear of the sanctuary as you exit today. We continue to give thanks for the faithfulness of this community of faith near and far who continue to support this church and its missions, which have been vital, especially during these past weeks and months. This Sunday, our Advent theme is joy. Our scripture readings remind us to rejoice in the Lord. Think of this offering as an opportunity to spread joy in God's world. Even though that world seems darker these days, rejoice in the Lord and give thankfully for Christ's sake. We pray, God of justice and joy, we bring our gifts to you in gratitude for your unfailing goodness to us. Bless these gifts and use them to create justice and bring joy into the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 